we're out in the shack now. I've got the uh, the Royce powered on. Um, I'll just whack my gizmo into the mic socket that I made. Seems to have gone in there. Okay. So that's nicely sitting there. Got the little unit sitting there. So, I hope you can see that now. So I've got the radio set to USB on the mids, channel 20. So we'll turn the unit on over here. So we seem to have some power there. So if I flick the switch here, let's see if we're going to transmit. Which we do. Oh well, wow. and you can see the the needles moving there. So that's good, up and down. Then I've got one signal, no signal. So I'll put one signal on, one signal off, one signal on, one signal off. So according to the instructions, I think I've got to do a bit of tuning. So let's take this out of TX. So you can see we're in TX. If I flick the switch on my little perf board, it takes it out. So everything at the moment seems to be working. I'm well pleased with that. So you can see the TX LED here. Move the switch here. TX off. TX on. TX off. Perfect. Right, so let's get inside the little oscillator unit here and according to the instructions it says uh, using the unit make a connector switch the oscillator with just one tone on and the level control to about one third clockwise switch on PTT and drive level control to achieve an output observable and scope switch on second it may be necessary to adjust the audio drive from the oscillator to achieve sufficient transport output without overdriving the rig. Well, I think we're there at the moment, so I've got the oscilloscope on. So I need to find my piece of paper now and set it up to see if we can read the modulation envelope. When you look on the internet, there's a lot of people on there that go on there and say, oh, this is the modulation and you don't want flat topping. But they never post what you actually set your oscilloscope to to actually read the modulation envelope and for me that's the most important bit and I've emailed a couple of them or contacted a couple of them and said what settings you do and they're really vague so another output of this video is I want people to see what you set your oscilloscope to to actually be able to see the modulation envelope because it's taken me ages to figure this out but I've got that other generator that I was using and it took me weeks and I, I was just flicking buttons on the oscilloscope to try and see now I'm not going to say this is 100%, but I can read a modulation envelope. Whether it's perfectly right, I don't know, because no one will tell you. Whether it's a trade secret and they don't want you to know, I don't know, but no one posts it. Got a cup of tea on the go. That's a little pause there, I'm having a slurp of tea. Right, let me get this telescope set up, and then we'll run through what I've set it to. So I'm running a Philips PM3217 50 megahertz oscilloscope. It's a two-channel A and B. It's got a delayed time base and a main time base. So we're running along the top here. I'm working off channel A. And it's the only button I've got pressed here. So I'm not on Alt, I'm not on Chop, I'm not on Add, and I'm not on channel B. Just channel A selected. Then along here, I'm running on DC. I've got main time base selected. And I've got this on Auto. So it's got underneath TVL or TVF, but I've just got it on auto, so it selects whatever. I don't fully understand that bit, but that's the setting. Then coming down to my channel A, I've got channel A set on five millivolts per division, okay? Channel B, although I'm not using channel B, I've got that set on one volt. The delayed time base, again, although I'm not using that, I've got that set on 10 microseconds and I've got my delay time up here set to six. Okay, and last one on the main time base, which I am using, 
I've got that set to 2 ms, so 2 milliseconds, microseconds, I don't know what setting it that is there. And then I've got a row of push buttons along the bottom here. So on channel A, I've got this set on AC, because the button's in. Channel B, I've got set on AC, although I'm not using it. Delay time base, I've got set on channel A. A main time base I've got set on channel A and then what I do is when the signals floating across the screen I turn the hold button until I stop it going from right to left until it freezes on the screen and sets it in and that's the settings that I use on my oscilloscope so hopefully you've got all those down if you haven't got them play the video back slowly and write the settings as you go and then transfer them across to your scope and hopefully if you get one of these units, you'll be able to get the main time base on there. Well, I've just been in and tweaked a couple of the little pots um, just to see if I could improve on that signal. And I have. I've got a lovely modulation envelope on there now. As you can see, that is perfect. You can't get any better than that. So this is a lovely little piece of kit. I would highly recommend that. It's running off this 9 volt battery. Easy to build. Uh, this is the only bit you have to build yourself is the connection for your rig um, but hopefully I've covered that with you again if you get stuck with building one of these please drop me a message and again yeah if I can always help I will but as I always say I'm no expert um, I'm learning as I go but you will definitely need something like this to connect um, to your radio to inject your signal but we'll give this a go and see how we go and uh, yeah nice piece of kit and very handy to have in the shack. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I was just sitting here listening to a bit of the old... Uh, Sunday morning net going on. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get the Royce reinstalled back over there now. Uh, get rid of the 6900 in. And uh, work it out and do some DX. Well, I've just popped back out here. I was sitting here looking at the 555. And there's nothing on there. I was thinking to myself, I fed that signal in when I had no microphone connected. So, could it be the microphone that's overdriving it? Or even the linear? So what I need to do now is get myself a dummy load, capable of doing probably two, 300 watts. And then rerun the experiment with the unit. And see what trace it gives me on the scope then. Because that will tell me when I actually speak through this, whether it's working. So... I think the next thing I need to do for that unit is rig up a little speaker to the audio output. So with the other uh, BNC cable, rig it, just put it to a speaker, plug it in, and then feed the audio coming out, the noise, basically into the microphone and through the unit. And with no power on, I can do that with my 50 watt load, check whether I'm distorted or not. Now, if I am, there is a resistor in the Royce that you can change for use with a power mic. So maybe I need to do that, I don't know, but... There will be a further video.